What's going on, y'all? So let's all right, you guys, I am finally here for the review of Scandal, and <clears throat> the episode was all right. It was all right. It was just focused on Quinn and what she went through, so it really wasn't much to it. I'm just going to say, Eli is crazy as shit. I forgot that the episode was supposed to be focused on Quinn, because when the shit started off, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, he up in the, um, <clears throat> we got Eli in the, uh, Home goods, like a home goods, like a Target or a Walmart or a Costco like store, okay. And he looking at something, and he just standing there, he in a disguise with his baseball cap on and everything. And then this guy comes over, this older white guy, probably mid forties or whatever. He bald, it. He come over. And he noticed that he just standing there. And he was like, you know, you need some help? And he said, you know, uh, I'll figure this shit out in a minute. And so I'm thinking that's his cue to fucking move. The salesman. He just standing there all creepy like, he like, bitch, I'm finna get this sale. Okay? So, um, he was like, well, what you plan on doing and all this shit? Okay, let me just tell you this. If you're looking at that one, that's the one that people usually go for. But, you know, get this one because... Even though the price is a little in, it's a better quality. I'm damn sure of it, okay? So, Eli got that, and it was a suitcase. And I said, all right, where the fuck you finna go, Eli? Now, like I said, I forgot for a split second that this was an all-quint episode. Bitch, I thought that he was getting that suitcase to disguise and, um, you know, to take care of Charlie's body. Because we don't know what the fuck happened to Charlie. Did he fuck Charlie up or did Charlie fuck him up, bitch? We don't know and we won't find out till next week. I was just like, okay. Then we see this other scene where Quinn is going to um, the elevator at OPA. She's getting on the elevator and next thing you know, we see Papa Pope looking up. I said, this bitch is under the floorboards, bitch. Okay? Quinn get caught up. Next thing you know, Papa Pope coming out. Quinn went into that elevator walking. She came out that elevator rolling. Literally. Okay? Papa Pope drugged that bitch and put this whole ass nine-month pregnant ass bitch into a fucking suitcase and rolled her out like real ass luggage. I said, you are a cold-blooded bastard. That is no way to treat a pregnant woman. And then put her down in his little bunker that he made. He was like, you know, can't nobody hear you. This room is made of titanium. You know, it's soundproof and all that shit. For the bitch to be soundproof, we sure enough heard the whole conversation that was going on upstairs and shit. I said, hmm, you need to do that again, uh, Eli. Next time, reconstruct the floors, bitch. Reinforce that shit. But Quinn looking like... What the fuck is going on? When she finally come to and he talking to her, it was like, are you going to kill me? Bitch, first of fucking all, she asked the live sing you. Because she was being all big and bad. You ain't going to get away with this. My team going to find me and all this shit. They going to come in here and they going to fuck your ass up. And Eli was like, Liv ain't send me, bitch, okay? No. You just down here because I want you here. Okay, bitch, you basically leverage. Because I want that hoe to give me back my shit. I said all of this over some goddamn fucking um, bones, okay? She said, you know what? I'm going to trade your ass um, to get my stuff back from Olivia. There's a bathroom right there. And ain't nobody finna come for you, bitch. Next thing you know, he come back upstairs and he talking to this little dinosaur figurine. Now, at first, I ain't gonna lie. I said, Eli done lost his goddamn mind. Eli ain't got no friends in the world that he trusts, okay? This is what happens when you try to be all-powerful, undercover, mighty, you know, um, secret service agent, B613 and shit. You done killed off everybody that you fucking cared about that probably would have cared about your ass. And people don't want to get close to your ass, so now you got to fucking have a conversation with a goddamn dinosaur figurine. Oh, that's going to come into play later. I said, oh, now that makes sense when I found out what it was. I said, how come he just keep on going the fuck off? What the hell is happening? Then we move to the next scene, which is what happened in the previous episode when we found out Quinn was gone. And he sat down with um Olivia talking about he got her and all that shit and what's going to happen. And um, <clears throat> he come back and he talking to the damn dinosaur again. I said, Eli, 
you losing it. I said, Olivia, this is your fucking future, okay? You're going to be talking to figurines because you done killed off all your people or they going to find out the shit that you did and they going to desert your ass, okay? Next thing you know, Eli back at the store and he back with the same salesman. He comes over there again. And the whole time I'm looking at dude like, you just so happen to pop up every time Papa a pop up and the way he just so creepy... You know, it was just really, really weird how he was, you know, hovering over him. And this time, the way that um Papa Pope was talking as if he really needed something. I hate when they do this. You think, it, you think they talking about something else. But they really talking about a crib, okay? And it comes into play, the crib that we saw little Robin in last week. And so, um, you know, Eli comes back downstairs and he talking to, uh, well, Quinn is up and she pissed. She was like, bitch, I'm hungry. I need my pregnancy pills. I, bitch, I'm still up in my goddamn wedding dress. Okay, I need some goddamn panties. I got crust on my goddamn drawers. Bitch, I just need to fucking freshen up. Okay? Freshen me up. Unlock my ass and we can do whatever. All right? So, um, she going off about this shit. And he told her that he brought a crib. She was like, a crib, bitch? So what the fuck you got playing, Eli? I ain't got time for this. Okay, I, I I really don't got time. She was like, you know what? Let me just tell you this. You trying to buy some time for Olivia. Olivia is fucking playing your ass. She is not about to trade my life for your shit. Okay? Y'all, you know how Olivia is. Bitch, you birthed her. Okay? Well, you help make her ass. And she just like your ass. She not about to give in. So, if that's what it is, it's over for us. Just go ahead and kill my ass, bitch. He threw that bag on the, on the bed and was like, look. It's some drawers up in there and um some cereal. I said, bitch, you can have her down there that whole damn time and all you can give her is a cereal box? Where the fucking milk? It didn't even look like he had a bowl or a spoon up in that bitch, okay? I said, you are trife. Then Eli come back up there talking to the dinosaur again. Then he at the bar and just so happened to run into Mr. Mar. And now at this point, I'm realizing it's not a coincidence because he's looking for a mark. It's not Marv that's weird. It's Eli that's looking for a mark or whatever to help him do whatever he needs or to set him up and frame him because he was a little bit too eager. He looked like he was an easy target because he had that, I don't know, he just gave off that, that vibe like he needed a friend of his life. And I'm talking about the salesman. Come to find out his name is Mar- uh, Marv. And um, <clears throat> they're talking about their history being in the wars and all this stuff and Eli chatting him up and, you know, trying to make him seem all patriotic and, oh, what they did for the country. And I went to this job interview and, you know, they don't even have um, Americans working there no more. They got all these little kids at these factories and shit like that. So, you know, he's setting up the scene. And I said, Mar, run. Okay? You just don't understand what's going on. You really don't. You so gullible at this point and desperate-like or whatever. Um, Charlie down there. In Quinn's mind, she hallucinating this shit, okay? And, um, she just had hallucinations throughout the whole time. She had Huck come down there. Huck was telling her, bitch, little girl, you sitting here doing all this stuff, so you just gonna give up? You been here how many hours, and you still ain't figured out a way to get the fuck out of here? Bitch, you're fucking boring me, okay? Open up your mind and try to do something. It's nothing I can do. Bitch, come the fuck on. You part of B613, you know what it is, all right? So, after all the people that came to her shit, Marcus came to her, and even Abby came to her, and I think probably David came to her too, and this is the hallucinations that she was having. Um, She figured out, hey, bitch, I do need to try to get out of this shit. It's the hairpin. She used that as a way to, um, you know, at first, she get the bed sheets and she tied up because Eli brought some boxes downstairs. So he had some boxes downstairs and he grabs the the uh, bed sheets and throw it over the box, made a little lasso or whatever, pulled the box over and it won nothing in there that she can use. So she was over it at that point. Meanwhile, Eli going crazy as hell because come to find out, Livia and them had that whole place clean, found all his secret places where all his weapons are and took it out. Okay, and so he goes back to the department store. Yes, him and Marv was talking about, you know, playing off the discounts, getting some, you know, 
scheming and shit a little bit using his uh customer discount his uh i should say employee discount to get shit for free or less than and it was like you know at first ma thought he was just talking about like the baby clothes and all that stuff because um eli had told him that hey my daughter is pregnant and i'm getting all this stuff together for her and woo 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 so he rolled up in there after he turned the camera around and he was pissed as shit he rolled up in there and he was like yo ma do y'all sell guns up in this bitch? And he was like, yeah. So can you do that thing with your uh, employee discount, you know, have it in, and, and give it to me or whatever? He was like, but the shit's going to be in my name. He was like, yeah, it could be in your name. But then three months later, you can sell it and you can put it in my name and all that stuff. And it could be all to the good. Eli Sweet talked the fuck out of him and got two guns. I said, bitch. You know, the fact that it's so easy to buy guns like this. And I mean, he was looking at machine guns and everything at a fucking department store i feel some type of way about that shit but that's another video for another day so he get back to the house and he looking at the um camera that's what was in the goddamn um um dinosaur it was a fucking camera i said i should have known because he was putting the fuck on too much why are you hollering at this thing like bitch you thought you won and i did this and i did that next thing you know we see Jake looking in like, bitch, we got a fucking problem, okay? And now he has the cardigan on that he had on when Olivia came over and uh, we thought he shot Quinn. So, when Jake sees this through the camera, all right, that's implanted in a dinosaur, which Papa Pope knew was there, he called Olivia and said, bitch, we got a problem. And this is when Olivia went out there to go um, talk to him about... Uh, getting Quinn back or getting the bones and you got so many seconds and then she started counting down. You're not going to shoot me, bitch, okay? Five, four, three, two. He walks out. He goes downstairs and um, <clears throat> he sees, he sees, what's your McCullough? What's your McCullough? What's her name? She, he don't see her. Quinn is nowhere to be found. She pops up out of nowhere because Quinn is upstairs listening. She downstairs listening to them. She hears Olivia up there. She hears everything that they talking about. She hear what she um trading and all this shit. And, 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 and she's just like, uh, ain't this a bitch? Next thing you know, Eli comes downstairs. He don't see Quinn. Quinn didn't get out of her little constraints and shit because... Remember that hairpin that Huck was talking about? The same hairpin that Olivia lied and said that she did not know about, even though she the dumb bitch that gave it to Quinn. She broke one of the things off, and she, um, you know, picked the lock. Okay, they was like, yeah, girl, it's about goddamn time. This is the hallucination team. They was like, yeah, girl, it's about goddamn time. You start using your fucking mind. Break them locks, okay? Next thing you know, Eli and her start struggling. She tried to choke him out with the chain or whatever, and then he wound up getting his hand cut. So that's where the blood came from. Somebody said um, the blood made her come from him delivering the baby. No, the blood came from him fucking his own hand up. All right, that's that little sprinkle or whatever came on him like that. And then um, he did shoot a shot at one point. It missed. And then when he got the upper hand, he was like, I'm, I, he didn't want to kill Quinn at all. That was never the fucking purpose. And he was never going to kill that girl. And Quinn was like, just do it. Just do it. Please leave. But wait, but wait, but wait. Wait until the baby is born. Just wait until the baby is born. Then you can take me out. You can take me out. And he was just like, I said, oh, this bitch got a fucking heart. Because he shot the gun again. Remember, we heard two gunshots. And we thought, like, damn, he shot Quinn and the baby. No, he just accidentally let the um, the bullet went off. The uh, gun went off the first time accidentally. And then the second time, he shot past her into the concrete wall behind her. And so he went upstairs. And that's when, you know, he going to tell Olivia, you want to see the body and all this shit. And um, Olivia was the one that said, you need to bury her. You need to make it um look like something else happened. And she said it so calmly. And that kind of threw Quinn off. Quinn was just up there listening to how she reacted to it. And I said, girl, you might as well snitch on the bitch at this moment. Okay. Because like you said, Olivia is not choosing you over this job. That's what that's what happened. So now Olivia and everybody else thinking that this girl is dead and Eli the one that planted all the stuff. We saw that early in the episode. He planted the wedding ring. He was trying to make it seem like she just got cold feet and um Quinn was like, they ain't gonna ever fall for that shit. Okay? 
But, um... <clears throat> When all that happened, you know, Quinn actually does go into labor. She started going into labor. They upstairs. He said, bitch, when Olivia leaves, she downstairs and she was like, oh, my God, you know, you could do this. And you could. She was like, put them chains down, girl. It's all right. We over it. You know, I got what I wanted from the bitch. I played the hoe. We can go upstairs. You can come kick it in the crib, whatever. You got free reign of the house. And here, yeah, drink you some water. All this stuff. Next thing you know, she started going into fucking labor. And then instead of taking her to the hospital because she wanted to go to the hospital. And at this point in time, Quinn can't go into the hospital. She can't go outside basically at this point because they think that she's dead. She thinks they, I literally suppose that just killed you. And five minutes later, you want to go into fucking labor. And then Olivia, who still got eyes and ears on my fucking ass. Bitch, is that a booger? That is. God damn. That's a booger. Y'all, I apologize. This is some real shit. <sighs> I'm clean now. I'm clean now. I apologize. How long was that up in my nose and y'all ain't say shit? Y'all wrong as fuck. But anyway, I did feel something trickling. I didn't know it trickled down. <laughs> That's some real shit for your ass. But um, at that moment... She trying to get him and convince him to take us to the hospital. Like, girl, you can't go to the hospital right now, okay? Because um, everybody think you're dead. So he goes and looking at something in the drawer. And I'm thinking that he about to call somebody and all this shit. No, girl. He didn't put a fucking... He forever drinking a bitch. This girl, I don't think that's healthy for the baby. As many times as you didn't put a needle in her neck and knocked her ass out, okay? And then got her downstairs in the fucking basement and um trying to deliver the fucking baby. Like, and gonna call Marv over to help. Marv was like, what the fuck is it that you got me into, okay? What is this? You holding this girl captive? I mean, why are we having birth down here in the basement? You got plastic and shit down on the floor? What the hell is happening? He was like, come on, Marv. I need your help. I need your help. Of course, Marv gonna help. You know, he was like, it'd be better. He was like, because I thought you said you deliver babies for. I mean, bitch, it'd be better if she was awake and she could push. You didn't knock the bitch out. So they somehow woke her up. She hallucinating about Charlie and pushing about the baby coming and shit like that. Next thing, the little baby is born. And we see Quinn waking up in Olivia's room. And um, Papa Pope got the baby and all that shit. And... He just, you know, having a good time. And it was like, I got some clothes and stuff for the baby. He really went the fuck all out for the baby. So when he leaves and she was holding the baby, she was, you know, about to breastfeed and do all this shit. He leave her to it. She's standing up and she's looking around the room and she's looking at, oh, he got the little wipes and shit. He got the diapers and shit. Okay, this is cute. Got her little onesie. Why these onesies all look the goddamn same? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, newborn, six months, 12 months, 24 months. Wait a minute. Newborn, six months, 12 months. Bitch, why the fuck all these clothes up in here? Why all these clothes up in here? You you, you think I'm going to be up in here for 12 months, for 24 months? What the hell is happening? So she go downstairs and she try to cuss out Eli with the baby. I said, that's a, um, that, that ain't no newborn. That newborn look at least, uh, about three months already. I'm just saying, y'all need to get the right baby size when y'all trying to do this stuff. Like, she, unless the baby weigh like 10 pounds or whatever and up, that's a fresh-ass three-month-old newborn that she just gave birth to. It ain't no newborn, newborn. But she called him out on the stuff and was like, you know, so basically you trying to have me here till kindergarten? I said, girl, you can't do no shit. You can't go nowhere. They think you dead. Bitch, in the process, she done seen... Him trying to, um, what was it? Trying to clean up the Marvin mess. He didn't kill Marvin. I said, y'all could have let him go. All right? And at this point, Eli gets pissed off because Quinn was like, I just called you good people. I just said you were a good man because that's what she said when he was in the room. Forgetting her all that stuff. You are a good person. I said, you saying that to the wrong fucking person, okay? And it was like, you know... 
you going to kill this man and all this shit. He was like, this man is named Marvin Hayward, okay? He was my friend. He was a good person, okay? Mothers and children first. Remember what you said in B613? We don't kill mothers and children and all this shit. And she was like, so don't preach to me and all that. And next thing you know, Quinn was just looking like, oh, okay. And it was all cool with her. I was just like, so you going to be living with Papa Pope this whole time. And it just irks me. Like, I just want to understand what just, I just want to get to next week's episode because I need them to explain whether or not Charlie going to realize that Quinn is downstairs. Because I know the bitch is still in the house when he comes over there trying to whoop Papa Pope ass. Okay. That's all that I really want to know. Do Papa Pope take him out or do Quinn, uh, do, do Papa Pope get taken out by Charlie? Okay. And do Quinn pop up and, you know, rescue me or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But that was scandal, y'all. A day later, but, you know, I'll give it to you. Here it is. How to get away with murder coming up next. Okay.